hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is when you are working out, welcome. I am Jill Baird, and today I have a low impact, all levels appropriate workout for us. So it's appropriate if you're a beginner, if you're an advanced senior, or if you're someone who's been working out for a long time. If you're a beginner, you're gonna use lighter weights and you're not going to take your balancing moves as far as if you are a more advanced exerciser. I'm going to give you some options for some advanced balance throughout the workout. We're gonna start with the warm up. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We have four moves in our warm up. Um, this entire workout is no repeat, meaning we will not repeat any of the moves. Um, I believe I said to have your dumbbells handy, um, lighter if you're a beginner, a little bit heavier, medium if you're more advanced. We're going to go ahead and get started. When we hear the bell, we're going to come into a march in place. If you work out with me a lot, I'm sure you knew that that was coming. So just beginning to drive the knees up and then driving the opposite hand up. So both dogs are out here with me today, um, usually it's just Fiona, but Charlie Wanted to be out here as well, so we will see what happens. Now bring your fist to your shoulders, and as you march, we're going to press our fists up towards the ceiling. We're going to see this exact movement with dumbbells later in our workout. So the timer's going to ring, and we're going to have 12 seconds to move into our next warm-up move, which is going to be a side step and a tap behind. You can join me. I have the timer set for the same timer that we're going to use in the workout. So we'll be working for 40 seconds with 12 seconds. Okay, if you haven't joined me already, join me. Side step. If you're not tapping behind, it's just a side to side step. It challenges our balance a little bit more to bring the toe behind the opposite foot. Now we're going to create a little letter X, if you will, with our hands. And this is another movement that we're going to see in our workout. And I'm changing the hand that crosses in front. Make sure your core is turned on so that we're not just dumping down into our legs, but lifting our chest up away from our hips. All right, next movement is going to be alternating step back so just stepping one foot back making sure that you're pressing into the heel we're going to hear the bell but if you haven't yet join in pressing into the heel of the foot that's in front and then we're just going to start to lift our arms here bringing some movement into our shoulders make sure that your shoulders are not creeping up towards your ears Drop them down into their sockets and hug them in towards one another. And we have one final move after this in our warm up, and it's a hinge deadlift. So, not a squat, but a hinge. <clears throat> so, stand with your feet hip width distance apart, little bend in your knees, and bring your fingertips to your hip creases. And then begin to press back. Hinging at your hips, bringing your chest in the direction of parallel towards the mat, but keep your shoulder blades hugging in towards one another, not scrunching forward like we do when we sit at a computer. Squeeze your buns, tuck your tail under, and come up to stand. You can even run your fingers down the fronts of your legs. So, warming up the backside body here, the hamstrings, the glutes, the low back, Different than a squat where we're working our quads, this is working the back of the body. And we will see this again in our workout with dumbbells, which is why I wanted us to do it at the beginning of our, um, in our warm up. Okay, so that concludes the warm up portion. We now have five circuits or five groups of exercises, four exercises that we're gonna do together. We're gonna do one move, then a second move, and then we're gonna combine the two moves. So grab your dumbbells, and we're gonna start 
by bringing those dumbbells to our shoulders and at the bell we're going to come into an overhead press. So keeping your core engaged, not rounding through your low back. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me. Slight bend in the knees, maybe not even like a micro bend. And then we're just pressing the dumbbells up overhead. Palms face in towards one another. Inhaling as you lower with control and exhaling as you press the dumbbells up towards the ceiling. So we're only going to do this move this one time. Alright, now bring the dumbbells down by your side and at the bell we're going to come back into that march like we did in our warm up but holding our dumbbells. So loop your shoulders down and back into their sockets like your back was up against a wall. Your head is over your shoulders, which is over your hips. And then depending on your balance, if you're not super steady, you're just going to tap one toe to the ground. If you are super steady, you're going to drive the knee up, trying to break the plane of your hips. So pulling that low belly in, back, and up, and then using those muscles to help drive the knees up towards the ceiling. Okay, now we're gonna put those two moves together, rack the dumbbells at your shoulders, and it's either going to look like a press on the right and a toe tap on the left, or a press on the right and a knee drive on the left. I'm gonna go with the knee drive, but if that's too much for your balance, you're gonna kickstand those toes and you're gonna hold the leg steady. So even just changing from having the entire sole of the foot on the ground to um, the toe definitely adds extra balance. Or if you had a chair out in front of you, you could rest that hand on the chair to help steady you. So pressing up towards the ceiling and then lowering with control. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're either kickstanding those toes, squeeze your glutes, and pressing the dumbbell in the opposite hand, or we're marching and pressing. All right, there's the bell. We're on. So again, don't let your shoulders creep up towards your ears and don't let them hunch forward. Keep them nice and open. So after this, we're going to have all new exercises. <clears throat> we're going to have two exercises and then we'll combine the two exercises. <clears throat> it's a little mashup here. Whoo, that arm's getting tired and I'm using light dumbbells. So if you are using heavier dumbbells, kudos to you. Okay, you can put the dumbbells down. Shake your arms out. I believe we have 30 seconds here. If you don't need the 30 seconds, I want you to do side steps or a boxer shuffle. And I'm gonna demonstrate our first move, which is going to be front raises. So again, loop those shoulders down and back into their sockets. Press your heart forward. Lift your chest up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lift to shoulder height and inhale lower with control. If you didn't join me, jump in and join me. That was the bell. Whoo! Exhaling to lift, that core is nice and engaged. And then inhaling as you lower. So after this move, we're gonna do those deadlifts, that hinge, and we're gonna use the dumbbells to trace, to paint down our legs and up our legs. So, I heard a cue the other day for dumbbells, which actually, I mean for deadlifts, which actually is a really good cue, but it's a little harsh. Think about that there's sandpaper on your hands, and as you trace the dumbbells up your legs, the sandpaper scratching your legs, right? So it's, it's a visual. Shoulders down and back in your sockets. 
apart, drawing forward, butt pressing back. Squeeze your buns, tuck your tailbone under, and come up to stand. So we're going to mimic this same motion in the last two exercises where we're going to combine that front raise and this hinge motion. So really squeezing your butt. You should definitely feel this in your hamstrings, the big muscles in the backs of your upper legs. Keep your gaze out in front of you and only lower as far as you can and still keep your shoulders open. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little step back with my right foot. Make sure that your feet are hip width distance apart. So think railroad tracks, not train tracks. And I'm gonna hinge and just trace that left leg. So that was the bell, come up, and I'm gonna lift the right arm only. So hinge, dumbbells paint down that left shin, squeeze the left glute, tuck the tail under, come up to stand, and lift the dumbbell to shoulder height. Keep the chest open, so not like you're hunching over your phone or your computer, but that you're tall and proud and you want that heart to shine forward. So we're not getting in a lot of reps here, but they're definitely strengthening the back of our body. Okay, now we're gonna switch it out. My right foot is gonna stay planted. I'm gonna step my left foot back. I'm leaning on my left toes, so my left toes are tucked under. Open up the chest. Press your butt back, hinge like your hip is a door hinge, and then come up to stand and lift the left dumbbell. Hinge, squeeze the glute, tuck the tail under, and lift. Inhaling as you lower with control. Exhaling as you come up. Okay, so then next we're going to do an alternating hammer curl. So the palms face in as you bring the heads of the dumbbells up to your shoulders with an alternating bicep curl, palms face out. So we're just going to alternate those two moves for 40 seconds. So again, shake your arms out, drop your shoulders down into their sockets, bring your elbows into your side body, and we're on in three, two, one. So hammer curl, control as you lift, control as you lower, and then traditional bicep curl with the palms facing forward. At the bottom, hands rotate in to face the hips, and then they rotate out to face away from you. So really you could do this with a lot heavier weights. Those biceps are big muscle groups. So if you have heavier dumbbells and you wanna grab them, pause the video and go ahead and grab them. That's the beauty of doing a recorded workout is if the weights aren't working for you, either they're too heavy or they're too light, you pause the video and you grab new ones. Okay, the second move here is a kick. So if you need, to hold on to a chair as you do this, hold on to a chair or a wall, and I want you to think a lift from the knee and then a kick with the foot. Lift the knee, kick the foot. Lift the knee, kick out with the heel. So getting our heart rate up a little bit here, and then we're going to put this together with the bicep curl and the hammer curl for the last two moves in this little circuit. And then we have one more. <clears throat> oh no, sorry, we have two more. I was getting ahead of myself there. Two more groups of four exercises after that. Okay, so now it's going to look like this. I'm going to palms face forward, curl, and kick my right foot. So both hands are curling. Drive up with the right knee and kick forward. Join me at the bell. Keep those elbows pinned to the side. This one's a little like um, patting your head and rubbing your tummy, right? 
So if one part of it is too much, you're going to take it out. So if you're having trouble with the balance, you're just going to tip or kickstand the right toes. And if that's even too much, you're going to bring the sole of that foot flat to the mat. Otherwise, it's a kick. It's a knee drive and a kick. So we're actually working into the quad there a little bit with that kick, which is the big muscle in the front of the leg. Okay, so now we're gonna do hammer curl and a kick on the left. So you think about what you know from the right side. Do you need your left foot flat on the mat? Do you need to tiptoe or are you able to kick? So at the bell, we're gonna hammer curl, knee drive and kick. Hammer curl, knee drive and kick. Heads of the dumbbells come up towards the shoulders, the fronts of the shoulders. Elbows stay pinned into your side, and we're not just letting those dumbbells flop down, right? That's, that's where we're getting that extra work. <clears throat> Exhale as you drive and kick, and inhale as everything lowers. And if your balance is off, that's okay. Do what is right for your body today. All right, next move is gonna be a hinge move. So think about that hinge again. We're gonna bring the palms to face forward in a dumbbell row. So I want you to think about your elbows as little cricket wings. Squeeze your butt and then pull the elbows up and hold, okay? Uh, we're gonna start in four seconds at the bell, drop your shoulders down into their sockets, squeeze and lower. So your gaze is beyond your toes. It's probably about three feet to the diagonal in front of you. Try to squeeze those little cricket wing elbows up at the top. So working our upper back, our shoulders a little bit, of course, our arms a little bit, but mainly the upper back. Keep squeezing your butt, keep the low back safe. All right, so our next move, we're gonna bring the heads of the dumbbells up to the shoulders and the elbows are gonna stay out like little cricket wings. And we're gonna do alternating, or not alternating, we're gonna do tricep extensions. Join me at the bell. If you wanna tap the toes back, you can tap the toes back. But if that's too much, you're just gonna stay standing at center and you're gonna lift those dumbbells. Lift so that those triceps, those muscles in the upper backs of your arms turn on. Exhaling as you lift and inhaling as you lower. Keep the elbows up the entire time. Okay, so this time my left leg is going to stay planted. So the sole of the left foot is on the mat. My left knee is over my left ankle. My right toes are back. My right heel is lifted. I'm going to row the dumbbell in my right hand and then kick back, lower it. In case you haven't yet, join me. Row, kick back, and lower. You could put your left hand on a chair here. You could also step that right foot up for more stability. If you wanna progress it, you could even balance on that left foot. Okay, lots of choices here. Okay, switch it out. So my right foot is grounded, pressing through all four corners of that foot, inner and outer heel, the pinky toe mound and the big toe mound of the foot. My hips and the fronts of my shoulders are facing forward. I'm not opening up to the left. As I row, I'm anti-rotational here, right? I'm using my core muscles to keep me from rotating wibbly-wobbly 
open to the left. So think about that movement initiating at the spot between your shoulder blades. That's where the lift comes from. Draw the elbow up towards the ceiling, kick the palm back, and then bring it forward. So a lot of upper arm here, a lot of core as we keep from twisting. All right, we have two more circuits. We have um, alternating um, upright row. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, it's been one of those mornings when I came out to film the class. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see from my camera. Lens cap was on. Oh well, happens to the best of us. So bring your right hand in front of your left, but keep your chest open. Exhale, elbows come up. Inhale, left hand comes in front of the right. So we're alternating. What is it, Fiona? What's going on? No, 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 Fiona. Ignore that. I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> She's being a dog. Shocking. The dog is being a dog. Make sure your core is engaged. You have a slight bend in your knees. Ooh, it's kind of heavy. Did an arm workout yesterday with my group that comes <clears throat> to work out. So we're gonna do a side step, toes tap behind. Side step, toes tap behind. If it's too much, you're just going to do side steps, okay? Join me. Step, tap, step, tap, step, tap, step, tap. So a curtsy lunge motion. If curtsy lunge is something you do, you can take it down into that curtsy lunge. Otherwise, we're tapping, tap. So the knee bends behind the front knee and the toes tap behind that front shoulder, that side. Okay, so now we're gonna put those together. I'm going to cross my right hand in front and I'm gonna tap my right toes behind my left. If curtsy lunge is a thing for you, you're gonna come down into a full curtsy lunge. Otherwise, you're just stepping those toes back and tapping them behind. And the right hand stays in front. And the right toes tap behind. heavy. And we have one more round of this where we're going to ground the right foot and step the left toes behind. Okay, shake your arms out. So it's either, so the left palm is in front, curtsy and lift, or tap and lift. Three seconds, you're going to join me at the bell. Left palm in front of the right, left toes behind the right. And if the dumbbells are too much, you can set the dumbbells down and do this with fists. If you need heavier dumbbells, grab heavier dumbbells. So working on balance, working on upper body strength, working on core strength, because our core is supporting us, right? And then of course, <clears throat> working on that lower body strength in the supporting leg. Woo! Okay, shake those arms out. We have four exercises left. Well, two on the right, two on the left. It's core. We're gonna grab the dumbbells in each hand. Step your feet wider than hip width distance apart. Tuck your tail under, and we're gonna come into what's called a teapot. So we're going down with the dumbbell, tracing the right leg, and then using the left side body to pull us up. Join me at the bell. So working those obliques, the muscles that run along the side body, 
chest stays lifting towards the ceiling. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's such a good side body strengthener. Fiona, nobody wants to see that. Fiona, hopefully you can't see that. Bad advertising for me, Fiona. <laughs> All right, and now after the next 15 seconds of rest, we're gonna switch to the other side, tracing the left leg with the left hand and dumbbell, and then coming back up to stand. So join me at the bell, loop your shoulders down and back in their sockets, chest stays lifted, and then really think about this side body that isn't bending down as what is lifting you up. So I'm leaning, teapotting towards my left, but it's my right side oblique that's bringing me back upright. So for the next two moves, we're gonna put one of the dumbbells down and we're gonna use one dumbbell. Okay, so I'm going to start with the dumbbell in my left hand. I'm going to pass it behind my back to my right, and then I'm going to pass it in the front. And we're going to move in this same direction for 45 seconds, and then we'll switch directions. Okay, that was the bell. Join me. So passing it behind you, you have to keep that core stable to keep from wobbling from side to side. And we're always going from left hand to right, and then in front, right hand to left. And then our last exercise, we're going to switch this out. So at the bell, we're gonna have 15 seconds of rest. And then we're gonna start in the right hand, I'm going to pass it behind my back to the left and then left to right in front. Okay, so take that dumbbell in your right hand and we're going to start by bringing it behind you without swinging it with control. So working our core, our shoulders, and then you want to keep that dumbbell about waist height. Inhaling as you pass behind and exhaling as you bring it up to switch in front. All right, last eight seconds of our workout here. You should feel very accomplished. Total body moves here. All right, friends, thank you so much, as always, for joining me. You know how much I appreciate you being here. You have many, many options when it comes to fitness, and it means a lot to me that you trust me with your movement. I hope that you continue to walk, to swim, to cycle, to run, to lift weights, everything that you do to stay healthy. Keep doing it and I will see you back here soon. Bye friends.